Hello? Hi, how are you? This is Ennis. Hello, Ennis. Um, I, my name is Slava. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. You too. How's everything um, going? Yeah, everything is good. Thank you for making this uh, nice program where you, you know, help out to the, you know, with the start of everything. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, I have uh, two left, I think, and that's it for now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, are you in United States or where do you live? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the United States. I have a hot shot right now, and I live in Chicago. Okay. So, uh, are you a dispatcher or a driver? Um, I'm owner operator. Oh. Uh, me and my friend. My friend he owns two trucks. My other friend he owns like five trucks, hot shot trucks. So. We were thinking about uh, buying more trucks, hot shots or semi trucks, car haulers. We do car hauling. And uh, yeah, so we were doing our own research and I came across your channel. I watched several videos and then I saw the program. So cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, how, how can I help you? So I was um, one of the main questions I have is. Uh, uh, is it better to first gain some experience dispatching and then buy trucks and dispatch them? Or you think it's okay to, you know, just buy trucks and figure out, figure it out on the way, dispatch over someone and I'll try to dispatch myself. Okay. Uh, well, you said you, you already own uh, a hot shot. So are you dispatching yourself right now? I'm, I'm driving under authority different company dispatching me but it's a it's a hit and miss when when you try to drive under 30 sometimes dispatchers they don't care sometimes they care so it's really up and down experience oh okay yeah i see so you're driving under their authority but you're looking to go uh your own way you know get your own authority and dispatch yourself and possibly get more trucks in the future right yeah correct okay well you know you gotta start somewhere um I, it's not that hard to uh, dispatch trucks, especially if if you uh, are a driver. When I was a driver, uh, and I, I uh, started dispatching uh, under a di you know for a different company, and I had no trouble at all. The only thing that you may have trouble with is like because you're driving, you're constantly on the road, and then you have to look for loads as well. You know that might be an issue. Uh, but as far as calling loads and booking loads and all that, they, they, I mean, you already know 90% of the things, you know. So that, uh, uh, maybe you could get someone like a relative, you know, I don't know if you like um, a wife, girl, girlfriend, brother, friend, someone that can help you in the beginning, you know, with dispatching. Uh -huh. Okay. And do you think it's... Uh good idea to mm -hmm. so let's say I have some cash and uh, so what do you think is a good idea to buy several trucks at once or like five or ten trucks or is it just better to you know add one by one I I would especially since you're you know just just starting I would you know go with one by one unless you know like right now it's hard to get trucks unless you get some kind of a really good deal that you don't want to miss, you know, <laughs> that you might regret later that you didn't get. Uh, but in normal times, you know, when when there is equipment available, especially for a beginner, it's it's better to go one by one. Uh, you know, when you get like five, ten trucks and you and you get like two or three at five at a time, you already know what you're doing. But you know, one one or two at a time. I think that would be the best way to slowly start and maybe run for a year like that. And then when you feel comfortable, when you have some help, you know, then get more trucks at the same time. Okay. And do you know if that um, getting MCDOT numbers, is it uh, better to find some good state for the MCDOT? Because um, like some people say it's better to go to Ohio or to Washington to get better insurance rates rather than doing it in your home state? Well, you know, the thing with that is you have to have an office uh, in that state. 
So if you are, which state did you say you were in right now? Illinois. Illinois? Yeah. Oh, are you in like Chicago area? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I know some people, I'm, I'm in Grand Rapids, I'm not that far. Um, okay. I know some people because Michigan is a very bad state, you know, as far in, as insurance goes. And I know some people that actually go to Indiana and do it over there. But then they have to have an office in Indiana. So they just like rent like a satellite office just for, you know, just so yeah. they can. So you would have to have an office in a different state. And I know a lot of people go to Indiana and you're you're very close to Indiana. Um, so if you, if you have a, a way to get an office, like a small office for like a couple of hundred bucks a month, you know, then yeah, why not? Do you think it's like worth it, worth the hustle for the ins lower insurance? Well, you know, I know in Chicago area, there are a lot of, uh, agents that can help you with that. I know several of them. I can point you to, you know, some of them, but yeah. you are probably from Eastern Europe as I am. And uh, there are a lot of Eastern European <laughs> insurances and agents in Chicago. So I would just ask them, you know, ask them, like, what's the difference between having uh, an, an MC number in Illinois as opposed to, like, Indiana and see what mm -hmm. they tell you, you know? Yeah, you, if, you, if you can, you know, uh, point out some um, insurance agents, because I have troubles with that. They're usually never answer. They take forever to get a quote. So it's... It's just really, okay. really hard. Okay. I'll text you. Uh, uh, there is an agent in Chicago that I used to work with. Uh, they're from Serbia. Uh, it's a husband and wife. And then I'll send you their info. And then I'll also send you my agent, the current agent. They are from Grand Rapids, but they work with other states as well. So I'll send you both and you can just contact them. Okay, oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And then, um, uh, do you know if, uh, like, in terms of financing, uh, maybe you could, you, you might know something like I, mean, I, my friend, yeah. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. My friend, he financed through, uh, through some guy and he, he found some like SBA loan approved company, I believe like they take the truck, truck as a collateral, but it looks like it's so hard to get loans. I have cash and I have ability to buy trucks entirely cash. Okay. But I thought rather taking loans i don't know i feel safer that way in case you know trucks truck flips the gap insurance but uh maybe you know anything about getting loans because it's really hard and some guys they find some like credit booster guys and they really keep it secret but they i guess they have they have some like some loan companies they work with and they take like huge commissions for that help they take like a a fee and then they get you a loan approved while you you cannot get it approved like you get it refused but when you go to the booster guy you know he disappears for a month or two and then he comes back with a approved loan for somehow well well I've, I've heard of something like that i honestly never messed with any of that i like to i stay you know legit i mean i i don't know if they're legit or not but i like to go through conventional uh, means of financing uh, I know as far as, as as SBA loans, I know my bank, uh, I don't, uh, Huntington Bank, uh, they work with uh, SBA. I don't know, uh, you, you would have to have a, comp, uh, a bank, find a bank that does work with SBA. And SBA loans are uh, one of the best loans to get. Uh, you know, they have lower interest rates and they're very, very flexible. And, you know, they have... A, uh good limits you know like when you first start i think they give you a, a limit up to like three hundred thousand dollars and then whatever you buy for three hundred thousand then you know you you have that limit um with sba uh, but then i know also a lot of trucking companies go with B, bmo bank and uh, most of these bigger players that i know most of them uh, work with BMO. Uh, I, I, d I don't know how, I think their rates are decent, not the best, but they are very flexible and they work with a lot of people. So they must be okay because uh, a lot of uh, trucking companies work with them. Um, if I had a lot of cash, honestly, 
maybe at least for my first truck, I would just get it with cash. You know, it's different if you're getting like two or three or five trucks, you know, but if you're getting one truck, you're going to save money down the road, you know, um, that way. So I don't know, you know, it's, it's your own, your, your own money, your own business, you know, it's up to you really. But uh, me personally, I would rather pay cash at least for like first truck, you know. Yeah, that's what I need. I bought my, my truck that I have now cash. Yeah. Yeah, cuz you don't want to mess with payments. I mean, if if you if you don't have to. I know a lot of people are advising, you know, to get a loan e even if you have cash and they have their own, you know, points. I, I I'm not saying those points are not legit, but me personally, you know, I just don't like, you know, loans. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to contact them and see, you know, see if you if you can work with them. How much? Like, are you getting to buy a new uh, a pickup truck or, or a semi truck? Uh, I'm thinking about car hauling because it's a high risk but high reward. Okay. And uh, so pickup truck, a new pickup truck is right now it's around sixty five thousand plus the trailer is around twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Uh, so that makes it eighty five thousand and a and a big semi truck car hauler it's really expensive but you can get it uh, used it's around 200 i think it's like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. if it's used new they are three three hundred and forty thousand dollars. wow that expensive i didn't know that well yeah well i mean before they used to be also expensive but right now it's skyrocketed yeah car hauler, yeah big uh, nine nine car hauler it's yeah it's like it used to be 300 to 250 thousand dollars um, yeah, but again, you, you can get a weekly grass will be like twenty thousand dollars, sixteen thousand, twenty five thousand dollars. Usually, it's around fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars. Nice. So, no where do people find uh, these loads? I mean, the cars to haul. Like, if you're a big, you have a big carrier like that. Do you? Is it a load board, or you have to personally contact, uh, uh, you know, uh, factories or dealers? How does that work? Uh, it's uh, it's load. It's a uh, you know the central dispatch load board, and there are also big brokers. Uh, there's uh, there's this. Uh, Circle Logistics. I mean, they're like big, big companies that um, move Mercedes-Benz uh, trucks and cars, vans. So they're big, big brokers. They have their own load boards, their central dispatch, and that's how you get all the customers. Oh, okay. So, so some of these big brokers they have those accounts. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're also tiny brokers, but usually you never deal the dealerships directly because they, they don't have cars moving out in and out all the time okay cool all right so you would yeah that's a really smart move to maybe get a couple of those uh, trucks or maybe even big trucks and then just do it on your own and i mean since you already have the experience and you know how the industry works yeah that's actually like a really really big thing for me is that should I stay with the car haulers or just go like a dry van or reefer? Because it's just, I, I mean, I'm in this industry for like almost two years and it's so much, you know, so many problems constantly. Finding the drivers, the cars, they get damaged, they fall off the trailer and the insurance claims. Uh, I mean, I'm not talking about myself, I'm, you know, I'm staying, you know, very professional so I'm trying to be careful but looking at other guys I just the other day the driver was driving 50 miles per hour down the US road and he had he had a big Mercedes Benz vans and he flipped the truck somehow oh. nobody has idea how, how he managed to, to do that it's like 50 miles per hour empty road and he was he just flipped it <laughs> so yeah I mean, think it's, it's a it's a good pay but a lot of stress a lot of problems and yeah. when I look at your channel, like you're dispatching the dry vans and everything, it's much more, you know, simpler, so to say, it's calm, and here it's, it's always a race. Huh, yeah, yeah, I guess with the money comes big responsibility, 
Yeah, so you no know, here it's not like you said it's not that many. I mean we we do have problems but not that th those kind of problems. So I guess you have to if you want to succeed in your uh um kind of work, you have to be very careful and very responsible. So if like you said if you want to find a driver, that driver has to be a perfect perfect driver in order to you know, dude, it's it's much much harder to find someone. You know, for that, I I totally understand. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but otherwise, what do you think about the? Uh, let's say I'm get my I'll get my MCDOT. I'll get like five trucks over some time, and then uh, I'll get dispatchers to, let's say, because I will get five trucks. My friend will get five trucks. Other friend will have most probably ten trucks by then. So it's. You know, it's like 30 trucks, and we wanted to work together. Uh, so I think it's better to find dispatchers like in Europe or here in the United States. <laughs> well, you know, it used to be that everyone was here in the United States, and you know, for your like, if you're if you're gonna be getting that many trucks, hopefully, you know, you you want to have an in-house dispatcher. Uh, not not a dispatching service, you know. I mean, I would love to help you out as a dispatching service, but I'm just being honest, you know. It would make more sense to have a dispatcher that works for your company, you know, uh, that that only works for you. Uh, if you want someone from abroad, of course, it's going to be much much cheaper to to do that. The only thing is that you have to find someone again that's reliable. It has its um, up and down sides like if someone is over there they don't cost you as much money uh probably like half as much uh but the thing is like you 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 can't uh, control them you have to find someone that you you know that they're going to be doing doing their work uh you, they are not you know you you don't see them personally you just hope that they're at the computer and and looking for for work um, you know, there's less control, but definitely there is money saving. So if you uh, can find someone, maybe even if in your home country, uh, a friend or someone, or, or do an, make an ad online on Facebook. And, and there are a lot of guys, especially younger people that work from over there that have uh, experience already. So you don't have to train someone. Uh, because you don't want to do that. If you want to train someone, it's it's going to be tough. You need someone with experience, especially in your case. And uh, may, make an ad on Facebook or ask some of your friends or relatives over there if they know someone that knows English that, you know. But yeah, I don't know. At least to start, I would start, I would start with someone here in the United States. And then when you... Uh, just so you have one person, at least like one person here uh, that can physically do things here. But then down the road, when you need another dispatcher or another two dispatchers, then think of uh, like, uh, you know, outsourcing or, or maybe, you know, hiring someone from abroad. Okay. And uh, in terms of, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 that, that, I'm, I'm finished. <laughs> okay. And uh, in terms of learning how to dispatch, let's say I want to, uh, you know, know myself how to do it. You said it's not that difficult, but would you still suggest some kind of a, like courses or training to not be a complete dummy? Because also, I know that when you just open the MCDOT, at least in, in our case, we cannot get all the loads. We'll have we we'll need at least like six months before we will be able to get uh, any load because we need to grow our rating. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in the beginning, you know, especially because you're very specific. You know, you, you do you do cars. Uh, it it will be especially uh, uh, tough for you. Uh, usually, with the regular uh, carriers like CH Robinson or TQL, they they can work with you and you can just kind of manage for first couple of months. But in your case, it it will be much harder, and you already know that. Uh, but it will pass. It time time flies, you know, by. Um, as far as learning dispatching, uh, a lot of people ask me if I can recommend someone. I don't know of anyone specific that I can recommend. I know there are a lot of courses online and on YouTube, but I never uh, 
took any of them or or I don't know their program, like what, what they teach exactly. I'm sure they're good because there are a lot of reviews that they say, you know, they help them and they they manage anywhere from like 300 to like a thousand uh, per course. And I see a lot of people that, you know, say that they it helped them. Um, I don't know, like I said, I don't know anyone specific. I don't do any courses. Uh, I don't train anyone yet. I'm thinking about it, but I just don't have the time. Uh, I can maybe, uh, I know like two or three of these people that I see sometimes on YouTube. I can send you their uh, websites and you can take a look, you know. Yeah, yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, just remind me, send me a text message, remind me of, of that cool. and uh, and the insurance and, and I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. I guess my time is up. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, uh, another one uh, after you. So um, it was very nice meeting you. And um, I think yeah, you. Nice yeah. Thank you. I think you. You got it figured out, man. Yeah. This was it uh, for now. I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. And then hopefully uh, some of this information can be helpful to you too. I don't know uh, much about uh, car hauling. Um, so I guess I learned something too. Um, so uh, if you want to do that, maybe, you know, there you go. There is your chance. Um, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'll see you guys around. Um, have a nice day.